Is that the same cup of coffee from breakfast? It is not. It is coffee 2.0 because we are done with the challenge and I can have a second cup of coffee now. Are you ready to show all of the results from beef, butter, bacon, and eggs? No, because I do not want to show myself naked or half naked. And um, I don't want to show my scale numbers, my measurements, nothing. Hey, what's up, family? I'm Rachel. And I'm Joe. And we are Two, two Crazy, Crazy Ketos. Ketos. And if you're new to our channel, welcome. Here on Two Crazy Ketos, we do different things like recipe videos and we do product reviews. Sometimes we do stupid challenges. Yeah. And then every Monday, we sit down on a couch for Keto on the Couch. We just kind of talk about what's going on in our lives for the week. You can find us in different social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And we have a website, which is twocrazyketos.com. And that's where you're going to find all of our different recipes. Now, we do upload at least five new videos every single week, so make sure you subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to hit the little bell icon, and that way, every single time we only eat four things for 44 days, you'll be alerted to it. So, we are two days after beef, butter, bacon, and eggs. It's been an interesting journey. It really has. It really, really has. It's been an eye-opening journey. So... We were going to put this into a vlog and then we decided not to put it into a vlog because I think it's too important and we don't want to have an hour and a half long vlog because right. we're going over our measurements. So we do have a fairly busy day. Rachel's going to get her hair cut. Because it's time. It looks like a shaggy dog. And Anthony and I are going to be continuing the renovation here in the studio. We have to do some spackling and some sanding and things like that. So we figure before... We like have to cover all of this stuff with a tarp. We would sit down really quickly and go over all of our measurements and our pictures. And you may not want to see this. Not Look super away. happy with some of the stuff that we came across as we were looking at all of the results. But we're going to go over it all right now because we have slides. We do. I don't know. I'm a little nervous to get into this. You are. But, well, here's the thing we were kind of surprised by the results. So do you want to start with you? Or yeah. Or start with me? Start with you? No, start with me. Okay, so let's start off with the scale. Uh -huh. Because the scale definitely didn't tell us what we wanted to hear. Right. So we're going to start off with Rachel's scale measurements. So on September 21st, Rachel weighed 157 pounds. Point zero. Her muscle mass was 65.5 pounds. Body fat was 38.8, her BMI was 24.2, and the body fat was 24.7%. Now, I do want to say one thing, that that is using the in-body scale, and it's one day's measurement. Right. The in-body, you know, it's not as good as getting a full DEXA scan, and even a DEXA scan can vary. There's a lot of variables to it, so... We're not taking a whole lot of stock in everything because I have stepped on that scale and it said, you know, I had 30 pounds of body fat and then stepped on it like 10 minutes later and it says I have 48 pounds of body fat. Right. But that's what we have to use. Right. So that's what we're measuring against. And honestly, that would be my morning look. I right. mean, that's how when we talk about the scale is the devil, the mirror is a liar, like that's the scale I'm looking at. So right. that is the information that I have available. So I was a little bit nervous stepping on the scale because yeah, in the middle of my period, mm -hmm. you know, you you want really good results. But honestly, again, we said it didn't matter about weight loss. This was about, are you gonna weight gain? And I did gain point two. Well, let's go over those after measurements. So on November 2nd, she weighed 157 point two. There you go. So she actually gained weight. Uh, her muscle went up to 67.7, so she gained 2.2 pounds of muscle. Her body fat dropped to 34.8 pounds. Her BMI pretty much stayed the same, 24.2. And her body fat percentage dropped down to 22.1%. So on the scale, the normal way that I measure my success in keto is the one number at the top and that's the only number. Right. Right? So for this challenge, we're measuring all kinds of different things. Right. So 
you don't see amazing results on the scale, but look at the difference in my and body, the body fat percentage, percentage and the, yeah. and, you know, her muscle mass. And again, the better way to use the in body scale is to like once a week, get on it. And then you're looking at like, you know, how is the consistency? Do you see the muscle going up and the fat going down with only two measurements? You know, you don't have a lot of points, but if you measure every single day, the problem is, is you can't not see that top number. Right. But if you were to measure all of that every single day, you would see a steady decline of body fat percentage and a steady incline of muscle mass. But it is what it is. But again, if you look at just that top number, and this is why we say the scale is a devil, this was a failure. This was right? a failure. You gained 0.2 pounds or let's say 2.2 pounds. That's, that's nothing. You stayed the same. But also, her after measurements is during her menstrual cycle. I am pretty impressed with that. Right. Because now... Because you're normally up during that time of the month. And you know what? There was a different girl that stepped on that scale in September. There was a girl that thought, that time in my life is over forever. Mm -hmm. So I'm kind of rejoicing that it's back. Right. So do you want to go over the pictures? Yeah, because I think you see a difference. Yeah, because that's the whole thing. This is where you're going to start to get into the whole throw out the scale, the scale is the devil. Because when you look at that scale with no weight change, there's a huge difference when you start looking at You know what? Before we look at photos... Let's take a look at the measurements. All right, because that's another way to measure your success that we don't normally do. We only ask the scale and we never take measurements. And so, yeah, let's look at them. Okay, so on September 21st, your waist was 31.5. On November 2nd, her waist was 29.5. So she lost two inches in your waist. Hips went from a 42.5 to a 41. Mm -hmm. Chest went from 36.75 to a 37. We were, yes. We were so <laughs> excited and surprised by that, right? Like, that was amazing. But the, the Always fat, happy when the chest goes up. Right. It shifted. <laughs> so we, your thighs went from a 23 to a 21.5. Bicep went from 13.5 to 12.5. And neck went from a 13 inches to 12 inches. I was absolutely amazed. And that is going to make the difference in my clothes. And especially, I love that my arm went down. It wasn't that I didn't develop any muscle. It's it's th this part. It's the stuff that's still filled with some fat that is going down. And I'm, I'm very excited about that because I will be able to wear different sleeves even yeah. moving forward. Now, even looking at this, you do see a decline in in every single category she went down like an inch except for the boobs right um yeah. but you would still say yeah, i only lost an inch what's the big deal right so now let's look at the photos so here are you at 157 and then 157.2 and my hair was so much cuter in september <laughs> um look at your look at the waist look at your thighs look at your hips I mean, I see a noticeable difference, especially around the midriff. Yeah. Now, people ask all the time, do you have any loose skin or skin that doesn't look like tight and great? Yes, obviously, clearly. So, I mean, we're putting it all out there with right. these pictures. Um, but yeah, it's still a thing. But I love that all of a sudden I'm having some definition in here, yeah. which is really, really nice. Let's take a look at from the back. And that's where I really see a difference in you. I definitely you. got sunburned when we were in the Keys. And But look, your back boobs, way down. Yeah. Look at your hips. Look at your butt. Look at the broadness of my backside. Like your there. shoulders. Like yeah. look at your shoulder area. All of that got way better. Uh, then we're going to go to the left side. And again, look at your stomach. Look at your hips. Look at Even the you can see the difference in your thighs, like right where your hand is. In my butt. Like, it's not it's not a done lapping over. Like, I, that was amazing. And then here is the right side. And again, look at your stomach. Yeah, the width of my stomach and butt. Like, what a difference in change. Like, I, I'm, I'm absolutely blown away by those results. 
But normally, when I'm doing my day-to-day, month-to-month living, I don't take side-by-side pictures in the same outfit. In fact, you can see I we br- I broke the back of my um, bathing suit. That's why I like I'm like, oh my goodness, we still have to wear this thing. So I pinned it so we could be in the same outfit, so that there, you know, there's no manipulation or anything of wearing something that would fit better or something. Right. So yeah, I was amazed. You ready to get into mine? Yeah. Okay, so let's start off with my starting stats and my finishing stat. So on September 21st, my weight was 204.6. My muscle was 88.2 pounds. Body fat was 49 pounds. BMI was 27.7. And then my body fat percentage was 24. Now, I want to say two things about those numbers. First of all, that was actually my lowest weight. That was us coming home from Keto Palooza. And I was really impressed because when I left for Keto Palooza, I was like 207, which is the highest that I have been. Well, I shouldn't say that. I was like 210 yeah. at one point during the year. But I really was up about 20 pounds or so, you know, since I started keto and had gotten to my lowest weight. My lowest weight was, was right around 185. So, you know, to see that number, that wasn't even the number, but that is where we started at. And just a reminder again that, you know, the percentages for the body fat percentage is just based on one day. It's not an average. And you would have a much more accurate thing if you would do a DEXA scan. But DEXA scans by here, by us here are relatively expensive, around $150. So let's let's go over that November 2nd. So on November 2nd, I weighed 195.8. So that's approximately a nine-pound loss. Wow. Muscle... 88.5 pounds, so pretty much my muscle stayed the same. Body fat, though, I have 40.4 pounds of body fat, at least on the day that I stepped on this in-body scale. So it's basically saying you lost body fat, which is exactly what you wanted right. to do. And according to this uh, in-body, my BMI is now at 26. I don't put a lot of stock in BMI. And my body fat percentage dropped to 21.2. That is incredible. So... For me, being on BBBE, I lost a tremendous amount of body fat. Now, again, those results as far as the body fat percentage and everything, they could be off because I've been on it where it said that that was my body fat. And then I've been on another day where it said my body fat was 75 pounds. So you really need to look at the pictures. And that's why the pictures and the measurements are most important. So let's go over the measurements first. But before we do, I want to just say, as usual... We were on the same challenge. Y'all saw us eating side by side, the same food, and what happened? The man loses the weight and the woman doesn't as quickly. Now, I stuff was happening, clearly. Stuff mm-hmm. happened that I wanted to happen. But a lot of times you may have a partner where they see it on the scale and you don't, and you don't want to throw in the towel just because that's what's happening. And the other thing is you have to realize the difference between men and women, there's, there's hormonal differences. But also, your body probably has a lot more healing to do than my body. I think so. Because you have, as we've discussed through this entire challenge, you really have an issue with being afraid to eat because you're afraid to see a difference on the scale. And as we've discussed, we were seriously under eating. But see, I was eating more because I was going off without Rachel being around yeah. to eat extra food because we try to be equal. And, and I know it's a messed up thing, but this is part of our food issues that we need to eat the same thing. But listen, I'm a man who weighs 50 pounds more. I should need more food. That's right. So though I think my body has healing to do, your body probably has more healing. And Definitely. if you were to stay on this even longer, I think you'd really start to see differences as your body has gotten used to eating double or triple of the food that you were eating pre bbb a Because this is a 90-day challenge. We only did it for 44 days, but right. it's a 90-day challenge. Um, well, let's go over the measurements before we get into the pictures because even with me, I was not impressed by the measurements at all. Uh, so on September 21st, my waist was 41 and it dropped to 39 on November 2nd. I'm pretty impressed by my that. My hips are 42.5. And then they dropped to a 41. Chest went from a 43 to a 40. That was huge. Thighs went from a 22 to a 20.5. Bicep stayed the same. Neck went from 15.75 to 15. 
And yes, there is a difference in most of those areas, but not enough for me to be like, 45 days of only eating beef, butter, bacon, and eggs? Like, yeah. is, is it worth it to lose two inches? I can lose two inches eating a lot of other stuff. The only thing is, th two or three inches in your chest, that makes a huge difference. But it doesn't sound like it would. When you right. think just two inches, you know, two inches, should that take me from wearing a large, borderline, extra large, to now wearing a medium? Yeah. So, so that's, for me, not as impressive until... I saw the pictures. Yeah. Because I, again, looking in the mirror, did not see a difference. The mirror is so distorted. So here's me on September 20th at 204.6 in all of my glory of underwear. <laughs> we love you guys. I just want to say, when I looked at that picture, I feel like I look like I weighed 300 pounds in that picture. I, and I weighed, that, that looks to me, that is... Probably a hundred pounds from my top weight. Again, I've always said my top weight was around 285, but I that's what I recorded. I really believe I was over 300 pounds because my last known recorded weight was six months before I actually started yeah. you know, keto. We I was just afraid to get on the scale to see 300. A lot of chaos in six months. So that, to me, I look ridiculously heavy there, in my mind. Well, for me looking at it, when I just saw it alone, when we first took it, I'm like, you look great, honey. Because right. I, even as your partner, I, I'm i not, I'm seeing you every single day and even the changes happen slowly. Yeah. And so I just gradually, the, the, the biggest indicator that stuff was really happening was your change in shirt. Like I would see you on a daily basis and a shirt that I'm used to you being in all of a sudden look like a parachute. Also the boxers that I'm wearing there are a medium because I'm really cheap and I've just been stuffing myself into a medium because I don't want to go buy underwear because for some reason men's underwear are like $15 a pair. I just like that your uh, Rachel's bull tattoo is kind of sneaking down. Okay, ready? Out. Let's take a look at the after again. Yeah. So there's me on November 2nd and a noticeable difference in the rolls of fat that are coming up over the waistband of my underwear. Well, and look at your neck and face. That is incredible. Okay, ready? Yeah. Here's me from behind. And again, you look at my waist and you see like the rolls are, which is a lot of skin, but also fat coming up over the top. Nine pounds made such an incredible difference. I also look at like my skin is smoother, though yeah. you did shave off my sweater for the second picture. <laughs> uh, then we have, there's my left side. And that's where you really start to see the difference when you look at my waist and you look at my chest and you look at my face. Well, you're seeing in your stomach area, it's like a concave. And we actually made sure we blew out so that we weren't sucking in. We yeah. weren't trying to like trying suck to like, in. <sighs> we were like, uh, be as fair as possible. Right. Uh, and then here is me on the right side. And again, you can look at my chest and you can look at my stomach and it is a noticeable difference. It really is. And honestly, I feel like that looks like a lot more than nine pounds of weight loss. So you're like this. Is it true? Is it false? Like you have to just look at the picture side by side and take the word of what you're actually seeing. Right. Because when you see the scale, you're like, Okay, but is that true? Even when you have success, you're thinking to yourself, like, I think it's lying. Right. We, we're never happy. Right. Then when you see the measurements, you were you were like, okay, this means stuff is actually happening. However, you're like, is it enough? Right. So then having the pictures, it's undeniable yeah. that stuff happens. Yeah. So before we finish this up, we were talking about some things and one of the, the questions that we get from a lot of people is, should I do beef, butter, and bacon eggs? Do you think it would benefit me? So right. we were just talking and we came up with like three, well, I would say more than three, but three personalities or types of people that would benefit from doing a BBB and E challenge. Yeah. So the first person is going to be a person who doesn't like to track their food. They're definitely going to benefit from 
eating BBBNE. I absolutely believe that because while we were on it, we did not track anything. We did not care about fat content. We were not caring about how many carbs were in the egg. We were not um, caring about calories at all. We just ate food. Right. So with beef, butter, bacon, and eggs, we did not track a single thing. We didn't even try to make it one-to-one. -one, right. Right? So just whatever. Whatever we wanted to eat, we just ate it. So along with that, one that we didn't put in here, I would also add in a person who doesn't want to like basically eat by their watch, like doesn't want to intermittent fast every day and wants to learn yeah. how to eat based on their body telling them to eat rather than their watch telling them it's right. time to eat. Okay, so the second one is a person who likes big portions of food. Yes, this is somebody that's like me, Joe. Um, can eat a reasonable portion in a sitting or even a small portion of this in a sitting and eat later. But for me, I like to eat a bunch of food. I like to eat a bunch of food in a sitting and I like to know that I've had big portions for the whole day long. Mm -hmm. So if I'm eating other ingredients like nuts and cheese and keto snacks, I may want big portions of food. And But when I apply it to that food, I can get into trouble. This way I was able to get big portions of food and I still had good results. And and that's why Dr. Berry limited it to just four things because a lot of the other things are going to affect you not just metabolically, but they're going to affect you mentally. If you're eating a whole bunch of nuts, at least for me, that's a snack. That That's not gonna number one, fill me up. And it's gonna not like have this thing in my mind where I'm like, oh, you already ate a meal. Because right. let's face it, you know, like a portion of nuts is not a meal. That's why we actually have that video, I'm gonna leave a link for up here, of 10 things that we mindlessly binge on that could possibly be causing a stall. And honestly, I think that we pushed the limit of eat as much as you want until you're comfortably full much further than the average person. Like yeah. when, when he said eat as much as you want, we ate as much as Rachel wanted. We ate an entire brisket in a day. We ate an entire flank steak in a day. We ate between the two of us a six pound roast in a day. Well, that is a lot of food. And we have received criticism of like how much like it's a disgusting amount of food you're eating Rachel but it was by design yes it, because if you are looking at any of our videos and you're seeing how big our meals are and you're like gosh I don't even know like that seems like crazy and then you see we have good results at the end then if you don't eat as much as we do you know it's safe yeah uh, so the third one is people who get bored with eating the same thing. I was actually surprised by this. And I know, you're probably going, what do you mean people who get bored? How are they going to benefit from beef, butter, bacon, and eggs? That's pretty simplistic. But there's beef, butter, bacon, and eggs encompasses a lot of things. A lot of things. Can it get boring if you're not adding a whole bunch of sauces and stuff like that? Possibly, but that's where you start exploring with making butter mayonnaise or putting mustard on your roast before you cook it or using different cuts of meat, trying different types of bacon and those kind of things where we ate variety. We ate things that we never have eaten before. Yeah, and we used all kinds of different cooking devices. So whatever you have, if you have a frying pan, if you have an air fryer, if you have a griddle, if you, you're just using your oven, you have a, a, a pellet smoker, you you know have a Kamado Joe, whatever, However, you want to cook food, there's something for it, an Instapot. There's there's something to be utilized, and we had something different all the time. So to sum it up, I think everybody can benefit from beef, butter, bacon, and eggs. Is it a requirement? No. We're no. not saying like, hey, this is the only way you're going to have results. But if you're in a stall, I think this is a great way to get out of a stall. Um, if you just want to change it up, I think this is something that's going to really help you. If you're trying to identify what foods are causing inflammation, beef, butter, and bacon egg is really going to help because these foods, basically, none of them are inflammatory. Maybe for some people, they may have an issue with eggs, but you're going to quickly learn that yeah. if you just don't eat eggs one day and all of a sudden the inflammation goes away because it's a very basic you know, menu as far as the main ingredients. So I think everybody can benefit from it. 
Now, again, we are not doctors or nurses or health professionals or anything like that. We but just lived it. We've gotten a couple of messages from people about, well, diabetics can't have this. I disagree because when you're eating this way, you are basically eating zero carbs. The issue for diabetics is, is blood sugar, is glucose. And so you're not eating anything that's going to elevate it. Now, can protein elevate your glucose? Yes. Dr. Barry said, don't worry about that. It's not the same as eating a bunch of carbohydrates. But here's the thing. When your body needs glucose, it is going to create it from fat, from muscle, or from protein. So you can eat nothing and see a glucose spike if, like, for example, you go to work out. I mean, I've had times where I was doing a 72-hour fast and my glucose jumped up 30 points when I got up at 3 a.m. to go to the bathroom. How does it jump up 30 points if I haven't eaten anything in 72 hours because well, my body made glucose. Well, it jumps when you see me too coming mm -hmm. through the door. That's absolutely true. Now, one other group of people that I, I want to specifically say this would be a blessing to outside of just everybody is somebody who you're, you're going through a season where you need to not have inflammation you need a clear head like i think about a student that's going through testing somebody where you're caring for another person and so you need to be well so that you can be your best self for that other person we felt so fantastic every single day once we pushed past the i don't get as much caffeine as i usually do once you kind of go through that little bit of a detox then the rest of the time no headaches we slept fantastic you know i think about this with even new parents that are like hey i need to be my best self because we're going through this infant stage all of those people would benefit from this challenge and one thing that i really want to like hammer home is you look at those pictures and you see results and you look at the measurements and you see results and you know, you look at my scale and you see results, but with Rachel, you don't. But what those numbers and those pictures don't show is the thing that I think is the most important thing. Number one, it is not showing your body healing. Okay, so you can't see that in that because th that's a feeling. That's knowing and feeling better. And you can't ever put that onto a picture that you feel better. Right. But the other thing that it is not showing is that we have repaired our relationship with food. You know, to think that before we were terrified to eat, that Rachel would go to Keto Palooza and they're like, I'm not eating today because I don't want to look heavy when I'm talking to people. Yeah. And that it's just a mental thing. And to come into this and know that now it's okay if I don't intermittent fast every day. I can eat more. Fat is not a bad thing because we, again, we weren't measuring anything. And to know that eating the unlimited amount of the right foods is not going to affect me negatively. That to me is the most important thing and the biggest thing that we learned. Me too. And to sum it all up, would we do this challenge again? My answer for me, yes. Absolutely, I would do this again. What about you? My answer is definitely yes. I felt great and I had results. Why wouldn't I want to do this again? Yeah, and moving forward, though we're not gonna only eat beef, butter, bacon, and eggs, we are gonna try to keep it like this, have a dessert day, incorporate some other things, and eat more of a ketovore thing. And when we do want something like you know, a keto brick or a mallow bar or some kind of a keto bar or the good loving bars, put that in its place and eat it with the meal as a dessert over having one just like, hey, I really want to eat. I just want to snack on something and eating one of those because I think that's one of the things that got us like into trouble. Also, what we want to do as we begin reincorporating food on our days that we are like today where we're not eating anything but beef, butter, and bacon, egg because we're trying to see the results of the chicken wings, we're going to start moving to beef, butter, bacon, and egg on those days, but with the one-to-one -one ratio because you got to remember, yes. we were not measuring anything, and I think that you would see even greater results oh, absolutely. if you were doing beef, butter, bacon, and eggs and having a set of macros that you were following, and the only macros that we're going to recommend is eating one-to-one. -one. So eating something like a ribeye that is one-to-one, -one, but not also having 10 tablespoons of butter in your coffee, which right. we weren't doing that, but making sure that 
we weren't having our fat exceed our protein intake. Yeah, so once we start checking that and actually get our body in homeostasis, like I think that we'll see even better results. Well, that is gonna be our wrap up of the beef, butter, bacon, and egg challenge. Now make sure you are subscribed to the channel and you've hit that bell button for notifications because it's not quite over. We need lab results. For the next couple weeks, we are going to be going over and figuring out what foods we need to reincorporate, which is why we're going to continue daily vlogging for a little while. And we're gonna start adding things back in and you definitely wanna see what happens after beef, butter, bacon, and eggs. Also, we are waiting for our lab results. So those results will just be in one of our daily vlogs. Now, if you like seeing videos like this, take a look at some of the videos that we have linked right over there. Also, make sure you take a look at the most recent video, which I'm gonna put right over here. Whether you head this way or you head this way, don't forget to head this way. Subscribe to our channel and click the little bell icon and that way every single time we upload a new video, you'll be alerted to it. Until next time, bye. bye.